Welcome to Gaia's Love, a podcast of brief messages to help humanity bridge the gap to the new earth. My name is Vivian Gerard. It is my delight to be a scribe for consciousness today, sharing the wisdom that flows through from source. Here we go. Episode 122. It is Tuesday today. Chilly here in Cincinnati. Very chilly. The snow is going to be melting soon though, so I'm enjoying this last little bit of this blanket of white that we have been gifted with over the weekend. It has been absolutely gorgeous with just the sunlight dancing on the snow and making it look like little crystals. It has been just simply beautiful. So pretty soon it's all going to melt and it's going to turn into mushy mud. (laughs) We're going to see brown again underneath all of the snow. So I'm soaking it in while I can. Yeah, how how do I arrive today? Um, Tired, reflective. I, I was talking to my husband about this over the weekend. I have always resonated more with the new moon, with the... The energy of the new moon and how the sky is black and filled with stars and you can't see the moon it's there but you can't see it and the full moon when there's all this light usually leaves me feeling just tired like sleepy and exhausted and just like there's so much light <laughs> you know when you wake up in the morning and someone flips the light on suddenly you're not quite ready full moons have that effect on me and for a long time I didn't realize that most of my life I haven't realized that And then once I started to become aware and see the pattern, it has allowed me to be kinder to myself and not expect too much at that time, you know, when the, when the cycle, the lunar phase is moving through the full moon, I'm much nicer to myself than I used to be. And so this weekend when I was just thinking about the new moon and the full moon, I'm like, I wonder when I was born. And I looked it up and I was born literally on a new moon in South Africa, the other side of the world, (laughs) even though we all have the same moon cycle, it feels fun to say, like, even around the other side of the world, it was still a new moon. (laughs) And I was, I was birthed into that energy of all of the possibilities being wide open. So of course, I showed that to my husband, he just started laughing. He's like, that has nothing to do with anything. But it does. It does. And so as we sit here the day after a full moon and a full moon lunar eclipse, a full lunar eclipse in the month of my birthday as an Aquarius, it feels, uh, it feels like I've been hit by a truck a little bit energetically or emotionally, like so much has been moving on our planet, you know, collectively with just a lot there's just a lot moving and I feel it and so my body is moving slowly today and as I was sitting here getting ready for the podcast all I could think of is the day after and wondering yesterday in the podcast I shared the script I read the script from the I have a dream speech by Dr. Martin Luther King and today as I was sitting here all I could think of is what did he do the day after that What did he do? How did he feel? I mean, we talk about this idea of illumination, which is what the full moon represents. I I am illuminating all of the shadows in my journey to see what there is to be seen. Or I am dropping the veil of who I am so that I am illuminated to the world. That is what he did at that march. He stood in front of all of these people and with television available so it could be filmed and recorded and transmitted so that we could see it 60 years later we could see it in video live that moment captured in video and audio he stood on that stage and dropped the veil and let people see who he was the light that he represented in a time where there was even more darkness in humanity 
than what we believe we have now. There was even more shadow coming up to be explored and to be cleared and conversations for people to have so they could get rid of these old beliefs based on fear. He dropped the veil on that stage and showed all of that light that was him, that was his soul, to the world. So what did he do the day after that? I can only imagine the amount of strength and um, focused, harnessed energy that he moved through his body and his voice to have the vibration of those words still be so powerful today. He must have harnessed everything he had to project that love and that strength and that certainty of what was possible in his dream out to the world. So can you imagine the next day how he must have felt and what his pace would have been? The movements, you know, perhaps he slept in or drank extra water or nourished his body with really good home warmed cooked food by someone who loved him. Or maybe he simply let his wife hold him. Maybe he laid on the couch and just let his kids sit and laugh and play with him. Or maybe he went right back out and had another speech the next day and shared his message with even more people and got right back on the horse and kept riding it. This journey we are all taking requires different things of each of us and we have different ways of e expressing ourselves, of showing our light, of being a light in this world. And then we all have different ways of how we metabolize that or sustain that way of being a light in the world. And so my, I guess my invitation or my offering for today is be okay with whatever it is for you. Don't judge the way that you need to move through days after big events, days after big openings, days after you drop the veil and illuminate more of yourself to the people around you, to the communities you play in, perhaps to the whole world. Be okay with how you are the day after and be gentle. Imagine Imagine if you were sitting with Dr. Martin Luther King the day after that incredible activation of consciousness here on our planet. Would you berate him and tell him, get off your butt, <laughs> go do something? I mean, are you going to just sit there and let that energy sit? Aren't you going to get up and do something with it? No. You would say, rest. Rest. Breathe, be kind to yourself. What can I do for you, Dr. King, is what I am sure he heard more than anything else. How may I serve you? How do we support you so that you can carry this momentum forward? Say that to yourself when you have big shifts in your own journey. Those shifts could be the death of someone you love, the process of saying goodbye to someone who is dying, the process of burying someone who has just died. When you get bad news with your health, with your home, with your family, with your friendships, or the extreme opposite. When we have an expansion of consciousness in our lives that is beautiful, that is light filled, when we expand from a place of joy or bliss, the day after can feel just as intense as the day after something bad. What came to mind this morning for me was the day after my marriage, my wedding to my husband Brad. We were just giddy. We had, we planned our wedding in five weeks and we just had the most crazy cool awesome journey from deciding we're getting married to actually standing 
on a stage in our front yard and exchanging vows with a hundred people around us that we loved. And as we went through that night, you know, it was just more and more and more fun, more and more and more love. Like it was just this vortex of beautiful energy. And the next day when all of us woke up and started <laughs> moving around, it was like slow go for everybody. And then we had things to do. My daughter had practice for the drill team and my son had things he had to study. And I think the day after all of us ended up crying at some point because something went wrong. And then two days later, my husband and my son both had sinus infections. And I mean, we all kind of fell apart. We really just really struggled because it was such an expansion of love and then the contraction was just a lot so perhaps these examples give you guidance in your own journey just as I'm receiving that guidance for myself right now be kind to yourself after big expansions big events big shifts in your life this full moon and lunar eclipse are activating a lot, whether it's just emotions that you're feeling or it's actual physical manifestations of that that you're seeing in the world around you. Allow yourself the time and the space to be still and to feel what needs to be felt. To run that energy down through your body to your feet and into the earth and to breathe. To take a nap, to drink water, to be held if you need to, to journal, to share. Let the day after be easy and filled with grace because what comes from that is the strength to keep going with more courage, with greater conviction, with a bigger perspective, with more love to share with the world so that in between time from one expansion to the next can be really rocky and hard and you can struggle or you are slow and gentle and kind to yourself and it is an easy graceful flow into the next expansion you decide and either way is fine but this way is much gentler Thank you for tuning in to today's vibration. Let's take this message of pure love out into all of our communities and continue expanding love here on Gaia. So much love from my heart to yours.